Could you all see the screen? Yeah, I can see. Okay. Okay, let's get started. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, what I was, what we were trying to do in the previous. So, how many people are here? All. So, what we are trying to do, we are uh, trying to explore the uh, GeoRock database in a systematic basis. So uh, first we took all the data from it and then uh, we saw that bulk of the data is actually from interrupted volcanics and interrupted volcanics contain most of the interesting stuff. Also in the in the, in the previous uh, previous day we have uh, tried to explore some of it. Now we ha what we have done is we are uh, dividing the whole uh, interrupted volcanic setup in a case by case basis so uh, today we are going to look at these xenoliths from interrupted volcanics oh, just a moment i need to admit a few people natasha yeah i think yeah i think natasha would like to join uh, you can make me the host i think it's will be easier or co-host so okay. that i could let other people in uh, how do i do that uh, I think you could uh, find my name and click your right a mouse okay. on the right oh. side and then yeah and then I think you could choose me as a okay host. make host. I think Wumi is also in, so you should be good. Oh, I think we are field, but I will just give you it. Okay, so you are okay, now okay, the host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm the host. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So we uh, for the for the new two new participants who have joined us now, we will just repeat whatever I, I was saying. So what we have done here is that we looked into the GeoRock database at first as a whole. We did some plots and then uh, we find out that most of the interesting data which was happening and the bulk of the data was actually from the interplate volcanic setup. So uh, in the previous day, we have done some intra, uh, we have tried to explore these options of interplate volcanics. And uh, we, we find out that th there are some stuff going on. So that there is lots of parameters, lots of variances because there are a huge number of rock types. So we try to uh, now break it, break the interplate volcanic into a case by case basis. So today I have, Try to uh, the understand a few things about the about all the xenoliths that are present from different rock types in in single interplate volcanic setup, or that's available in the GeoRock database. So we have. So what we can see is that this is just our binary plot, so favorite ones. So what we can see here is this uh, the. If you contain and calcium content, both are varying widely even within the xenoliths. So, and the eclogite type xenoliths, it's a different rock type. It's a common mantle litho. It's a common mantle rock type. This contains high calcium concentration, whereas uh, some of these, like lazuliteic xenoliths, they contain very high FeO concentration but uh, lower calcium concentration. Uh, things uh, are more clearer here. Here we can see the complete stretch of calcium concentration, which is significantly higher. Uh, the MGO concentration, uh, it's, it's a more limited variation, except in some parts of this uh, eclogite and danite type com compositions, which have slightly more uh, high, higher range of MGO. But the if you, it's nothing comparable to the FEO concentration, which, which, has a, which has a really high range from 5% to 38%. Uh, we, the SiO2 concentration is uh, mostly similar. The titanium concentrations varies a bit, but it's not much. It's like 0 0.5 to 2 broadly. There are some outliers here. 
uh, the if you and if it the one interesting fact is that the if he three plus the ferric ion ferric composition of these garnets is uh, significantly low almost measured in in some of the cases now it could be a lack of data a lack of measurement of ap3 plus or it could be a real thing because we have seen previously that georg database contain a significant fatigue data for garnets in some of the settings but in these xenolithic settings this fatigue concentration of the garnets is significantly low uh, so uh, except in some cases like some of the eclogites and some orthopyroxenite xenolithic uh the chromium concentration here to three concentration also has a has a huge range and it increases in the peridotite type of xenoliths it, it contains the highest amount of uh, amount of it and uh, the, the 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 other ones like from the nights the eclogite ones they contain really low chromium concentration so the the here you can see this titanium and if it's plus ferric if he two or three ratio which is similar to our observations before and calcium is again showing a wide range uh, from in a, in sharp contrast to manganese which is uh, showing a significantly significantly constricted behavior uh, the composition is broadly varying from 2 to 5 weight percentage and uh, here we see it's uh, evident from the manganese versus magnesium oxide plots also uh, hydrogen concentration you can see here uh, h2o concentration water concentration is very high uh, at, at least present or higher in uh, these clinopyroxenites uh, type of xenoliths uh, wh whereas it's uh, it's uh, either it's not measured it's almost zero because the data is not available or it's really nil in these cases uh, we'll explore these possibilities uh, in literature uh, survey basis uh, here you can see similar things the data for clinopyroxenite is available or it's higher compared to the other other uh, other ones in the study uh, rubidium strontium plots is there uh, the, it's it's not much the variation there are some variations but broadly it's a, it's a, it's a constricted at uh, 0 to 25 ppm rubidium and 0 to 200 ppm strontium which is obviously predominant in the ones that contain clinoperoxines and more ratios of kind of because of the substitution of strontium probably uh, uranium concentration is higher in some cases uh, but this they could also be an anomaly or but it's not much because the uranium concentration is changing from 0.5 to 3 ppm so it's really within the range so they don't contain much radiogenic uh, elements uh neodymium and uh, in the cases here lanthanum cerium we don't see much variation the data is also not much uh, the ejrbm concentration it's really interesting it's showing two different trends and uh, th these two different trends are prominently defined basically by the eclogites so eclogites uh, the tick xenoliths and some danite the danite xenoliths are present here and uh, then then this trend this second trend is also being overlapped by the orthopyroxenite uh, so orthopyroxenite type of xenoliths so this yttrium and ytterbium concentration is actually defining two different trends which we have also seen earlier in in our in uh, bulk interrupted volcanic plots now we know the principal contributor to them the xenoliths that were contributing to that that particular trend the trend is uh, more uh, more clearer here in that this two Potassium versus ytterbium plots. Uh, we, we know garnet usually contains a higher HRE, so uh, especially these types of garnets. So, uh, so, so, so the, it's clear that they, they should contain high concentration of these uh, lutetium, ytterbium, these HREs, uh, and yttrium also because it's we usually use it as a proxy for it. And so so here we can also see two distinctly different trends and one trend is uh, it's uh, this eclogitic type of xenolith is leading this main trends and the second trend uh, there are some eclogitic garnets also but uh, the bulk is defined by the orthopyroxenites uh, type of xenoliths uh, lutetium is changing a bit hafnium is broadly still it doesn't change much uh, yttrium concentration is varying but we have seen it earlier H H2O concentration 
and the lithium concentration shows a bit uh, differences it's a it's a weaver light composition it contains weaver light type a type of xenoliths uh, garnets from weaver light type of types of xenolith they contains high lithium concentration uh whereas, whereas the ones uh, from the orthopyroxenite or, uh, <coughs> or or some some other types are like uh, the eclogetic types they are showing <coughs> low lithium concentration then i have uh, calculated the apfu it's a it's a big program because i have done it in a step by step basis so these are some of the plots the uh, interesting thing is this silica it's it's showing a uh, it's broadly coinciding with this uh, 3 apq values and most of the values are here as you can see here 3.02 3.014 3.007 some are like 2.79 so these values need to be discarded but other than that it's uh, it's a broadly a, a good apq correlation which you is expected <laughs> as you can see here is a concern sip few is not changing much it's uh, significantly uh, bordering close to 3 ap few and this afn mn they are also showing uh, th this is uh, the atoms or formula unit plot among afn mn uh, it's they are they are not they are clustering together so xenolith as a whole will cluster together here um the calcium on the other hand as we have also shown in the oxide plots is a it's a broad variation here uh if we chromium chromium concentration chromium concentration is actually increasing in the hertzbergite uh, the hertzbergite is xenolith from hertzbergite or <coughs> peridotite type where it's it's uh, really less in clinopyroxenite uh, or uh the uh, garnets from clinopyroxenite uh, xenoliths or uh, this orthopyroxenite xenolith Uh, Al two O three concentration is it's a uh, it's high in uh, core gannite type of xenoliths and uh, some of these xenoliths are here they like orthopyroxenite. Now it's core gannite type xenoliths or uh, is is aluminium type xenoliths because core gannite you know it's from corundum and garnet uh, garnet so it's an high aluminium xenolith so it's expected that it will have high Al two O three concentration. uh so this was it now uh, going for forward we will uh, uh, we, we will continue i mean i will continue with this uh, xenolith approach and uh, the, this is some of the issues like tria meter bm and this water content uh, I, i i will have a look at them and i will follow some of the papers that are in the references uh, so i mean the this uh, after some uh, continuous data sorting i have actually managed to decrease the number of variances we have here and uh, i think it's justified because uh, like uh, in clinopyroxenite type of xenolith say for example there was like clinopyroxen garnet xenolith clinopyroxen phlogopite xenolith like this there were these type of classification so i put them in clinopyroxen xenolith because anyway all of them contain garnet obviously otherwise how we are getting the data the garnet is only varying in concentration that's why the change is then change in name so uh, now uh, when, when the need arises we'll check them in a in a case by case basis uh, so so that's all from me guys okay now uh, you uh, uh, um i'm curious that since that you always plot this uh, two element um there are some observations that are interesting and my uh i, th I think my thinking is that uh before we get dug into details um uh, first uh proper later on after the women's presentation we need first discuss the how to combine georock and earth chemistry and second how do we do the data cleaning because not all the data are useful ones or are the right ones i mean they, they could be right ones in the original publication but when they extract the files there could be all kinds of problems so i'm very curious to see that uh, could you do the probability of the uh concentration for example just next to this one chromium oxide that i say we can see it has a wide range from 0 to about 18 uh with a mm. percent but i would like to see the distribution so maybe it's a normal distribution or something like that so i would like to see uh, the reasonable range and the likely for the points that are really lying out of side of it could be the ones that have the problems in the original data set and as uh, i mentioned yeah 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 Uh, I mean, yeah, and, 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 mean and furthermore, like, uh, go like ahead. Silica, like this type of observation. 
Uh, no, no, no. This is uh, horizontal axis is the yeah, horizontal axis is concentration, but the vertical axis is the possibility, is the probability. Okay, okay, okay. I and then you sum it up, it's 100% in terms of the probability. I want to see is the concentration distribution because some of the points that really lying out, outside of the normal distribution might be the ones that have problems. And similarly, I would like to see the, uh, I think you probably did it before, maybe Wumi did it, is yes. that looking at the current crystal structure and then we can also find the, possible, the, the ones that have problems. So I, I think that you probably also ask one another group member to look at it. I don't, I don't know what the details for that. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I forgot, did, did you? Did you ask any of the undergraduate student to do it? Uh, to yes, but uh, I mean the zero can uh, uh, to combine the zero can art game. It's uh, Orko doing it, I think, uh, or maybe he's collecting other videos. Orko or Urjashi, Ur Ur somebody, somebody is doing it. And this uh, this second thing, what you have just told me, it's no one is doing this. It's for this. Uh, I will do it soon. And uh, the un undergrads, uh, they are doing some work. I think Urjashi and uh, Orko both were given some tasks. So they're completing it. Okay, uh, okay, that's good. So, okay, so uh, Umi, could you share some of the information? And later on, I think Arka could show more. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, including Ojash uh, and then Natasha. If you have any questions, feel free to open your mic. Hello, is the screen visible? Yes. Yeah. So um, last time I was uh, doing the work on garnet kimberlite. So this time I uh, separated out the uh, eclogite data. And uh, after I extracted the data, I did some basic plots to understand if uh, there were uh, patterns or something. So uh, something I found some interesting patterns like uh, SiO2 is varying with FeO. Um, in most of the cases, in case of garnet, what I have seen is SiO2 is generally, uh, they show a constant, uh, more, or more or less within some range the value comes. But uh, in this case, what I saw is that FeO and Si2, they are showing a trend. And uh, SiO2 is actually uh, showing a relation with uh, all the major elements. Like uh, here with Al2O3, it is showing a slight trend. And even with MgO, we can see this. I don't know, there are some, uh, this is a, in uh, form of a curve, but even then there are some, uh, it is a region where uh, it is showing some trend. So I don't know if uh, eclogite garnets show this kind of trend. I, ha I haven't worked with them. So maybe someone can share their idea. Uh, so b these are basic some plots that I have done. So if, uh, I can see that uh, in other cases, uh, there were very much randomness in the, when the data were plotted. But uh, in this eclogite data, we can see that there are uh, some general pattern in the data. So here I plotted some other. Uh, the, in case of uh, what I observed that uh, the amount of data for even eclogite, it is uh, pretty less because uh, only I think about 600 data points, uh, if we see the total set of data that has been extra extracted. So uh, eclogite, I got only 619 rows of data. So I think it will be very necessary to merge the GeoRock and the OTCAM data because uh, uh, with uh, this much of data is uh, really not sufficient. So I guess uh, in Georg we have more data. So as we uh, as I've already shown that there are these uh, rocks are showing some particular patterns. So yes, this COMGO and uh, even uh, lead uranium. This is uh, not really showing a plot. And the uh, even for the trace element, the data quantity is pretty less. And uh, any, uh, they do, they are showing basically clusters, and uh, so this FeoMgO this uh, plot is expected that they'll show some trend, and uh, so.
like again uh, SiO2 and MgO even there we can see that there is a very strong trend so uh, SiO2 is actually be, uh, showing uh, trend with uh, a large number of uh, major elements so uh, maybe someone can uh, if somebody has any idea so and uh, these kinds of uh, tri uh, triangular plot has been done after calculating the APFU. Uh, this is not APFU, but uh, triangular plots have been done. And here the APFU uh, earlier I calculated, so I just put in here. So um, uh, actually, uh, I, though I have calculated APFU in this form, but I think uh, there are some errors that are being propagated or something because uh, in uh, when we uh, the total is not uh, close to. Yes, the, the sum total is actually f uh, less than 8 because it's close to 7.5. So therefore, I have uh, downloaded the APFU sheet and I have translated it into English. And uh, so I can actually uh, try to understand the code and uh, maybe then uh, in case of pyroxene, we can calculate it for the garnet because uh, it, uh, now it is in English. So I can, uh, so it's, uh, we can... Uh, part by part, I, uh, it, I, I can try to understand and then uh, try to change it for Garnet. So here, uh, these are a collection of the plots so that we can see the basic trends. And uh, we can see many of the like uh, ALSI, they are showing trends and uh, many, some trends are very uh, strong. Now, uh, when we are seeing this distribution plot in case of SI APFU, the interesting thing is it should be close to three, but uh, we are getting another cluster and it's not very liar. They are clustering around actually 3.2 to 3.3. So uh, we have to actually, uh, I have, uh, I just studied this uh, some, uh, today only. So uh, I guess we can look into these data and we can see why uh, this cluster is uh, showing higher SIO2 content because we cannot and, uh, others are showing some difference in the value as well so this needs to be looked at why two peaks are uh, we are getting in this uh, concentration now as we can see the as I already we have seen in oxide data even in APFU data we can see that uh, SI and MG are showing some trend but only some samples maybe this is the one that is showing higher SIO2 content they are showing a trend with magnesium Whereas the other SI, uh, the other um, uh, data, they are showing actually clustering around the three value of SI. So these are the basically data that needs to be looked at and uh, why this is happening. Again, in uh, I think in chromium plot, I don't know if I have missed it. So in case of chromium plot, there were some data that were showing typically very low values. So that's what I uh, looked into the paper. And what I saw is that these are some uh, sub uh, chromium and calcium. So the calcium value was very less because uh, most of the calcium value were within uh, uh, greater than five. But here the calcium value that we saw, uh, they were pretty less, like uh, almost 1.6 to uh, below three. So uh, they have been classified as a subcalcic garnet. So the data have been taken like the, the uh, imported correctly so that in the sheet there is no error in data incorporation but these are some subcalcic garnets so they uh, we should be careful that these kinds of garnet are there so um uh, i don't know if they'll impact the total interpret overall interpretation but the data uh, the data are okay uh, there is no uh, problem with the data um, and here we can see magnesium calcium is showing a trend mm. Even uh, in case of the, uh, there are only this particular cluster of data that are showing with a stronger variation with SI that uh, with the increase of SI, the, this element concentration is also increasing. So uh, maybe we can look at it uh, uh, due to some calculation error also. I don't know uh, what is the source of this uh, particular trend because others are showing this concentration uh, in the around 3 APFU, which is expected. So, uh, yeah, that's for the more the 3D. Should be good. You know, like I say, yeah. triangle ones or 3D. I think we do have a 3D visualization. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's great. We should plot more. I think including two things. 
uh, plotting three ones are better than playing two ones because yeah. for two two then you need to play uh, three of them in order to show the phenomenon. But the, for the, the three uh, triangle, uh, the ternary one, um, uh, uh, then then you only need one, so that minimizes the number of plots. Are ternary plots are also there? Yeah. So here I there's yeah, a three D plot that I have done. So they show a clustering at the this part, but here we are not getting any strict trend. So here, although uh, when we are plotting M G M N C A, we are getting a trend, and uh, these are some outliers. But uh, these points are pretty less in number, and uh, these are possibly not those ones that are showing a, a, a trend with S I O two, because they were quite large in number. And here we can see these points are less uh, less in number. Again, here when we are plotting trace element with MGO, it is showing actually variation RE and EPM because, uh, as I had mentioned earlier, the data that have the trace element concentrations, they do not have the major element data because the EPM and ICPMS data are different. So maybe uh, they need to be merged somehow if we want to compare the major or trace. If we want to keep them separate, then that would not be an issue. But if we want to merge, so here are some triangular plots that uh, that show that the data spread is uh, showing a very uh, central ten. Uh, it's uh, concentrated in the central part, and uh, no strong clustering is present. Here also not uh, much clustering. And you can see uh, this pyroglossal almond in. Plot has been done, and here also you can see that uh, they have concentrated in the center. And uh, this is the again plot that I had uh, discussed earlier that uh, uh, if uh, above this domain we are getting the mantle garnets, and if we are getting plot in this region, those are crustal uh, contaminated garnets. So these eclogite samples that we have, they act, they show the mantle signature. So. So I think that is it. Yeah, that is what I have done. So uh, I, uh, the question that uh, had been asked that uh, how to combine the data. So uh, with, um, uh, with the two data. So I think maybe we can uh, because uh, I think Orco is downloading the DOI. So uh, what I thought is uh, maybe uh, after we combine, uh, we can compare the DOIs of the two papers and uh, by uh, making a Python program or something. Uh, that, uh, we can combine the two data, and the, the program itself will separate out the uh, repetitions in the data. But for that, the columns of the data has to match. So maybe that part has to be taken care of. That uh, the both both data have same uh, column names. Then we can actually try this. Uh, hello. This free meeting is going to end. I think. Uh, really? I think maybe it has 40 minutes. Uh, I think, yeah, it has to have nine minutes. If we end, then we, we are going to open yeah. a new one by, by Slack. So go ahead. Yeah. So uh, the, I, can, I think that if we have the DOI and if we can match the columns of the two data, then automatically by Python, we can do that. Like uh, the common data will be excluded, repetition of data will be excluded. So that can be done. And uh, about data cleaning, I don't know. Oh, maybe uh, we can check this out. Uh, maybe we can divide actually into small, small parts. Then we can have an idea because, uh, for example, I saw this. Uh, may, uh, uh, there are some exception type of garnets as well. So they might seem that uh, there are problems with the data, but we actually have to go and check. So uh, I, at present, what I'm doing is uh, I'm translate, I had translated some of the codes like uh, the APFU and PCA and the stratified sampling. So uh, the, maybe we can try to uh, use them in the garnet itself. So thank you. That's what. I uh, okay. Uh, I think it's a good suggestion. And later on, I think um, uh, yeah, I, I think we will type more later on in the Slack. So Natasha just asked a question. So could you read the chatting area, uh, chatting part, uh, Wumi? Could you look at the okay, chat? I, I, Stop sharing. Jen, and, and, and then Natasha is asking, could you share the triangle diagram again with the one with uh, manganese? Okay, I, I'll share the
this one. Hello, Natasha. Uh, is it this one? Hello? Yes, she has said yes in the chat box. Okay, actually I'm sharing, so uh, can I see the chat box now? I don't think I can see while sharing. No, no, she has said yes, so we can continue. Okay, okay. Yeah, by MN content, uh, the high concentration of MN. But we have to actually check the uh, the source of the data. Maybe uh, the high magnesium is due to some reason. Uh, we can actually check those papers that have uh, outlier compositions. Because uh, as I tried to do that with uh, calcium data, that uh, the uh, granules that has low concentration of calcium, maybe there is some problem with the data. But when I checked, uh, it showed that there are some subcalcic garnets. So there was no pro issue with the data itself, but uh, there are some exceptional garnets. So maybe uh, this garnet will uh, be some sort, uh, maybe some sort of exception. But, uh, but uh, we need to check the paper for that. Hello. Hello. I'm audible, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. So, so Arka, do you have anything to share? Uh, so, I was working on um, uh, on gathering the data of the Mosevier analysis for garnets. So, there is a problem uh, that uh, there's no fixed database like that where I can get the Mosevier data. Uh, so, I'm going through all the papers, and I am logging their DOIs and if I can download the supplementary sheets I'm doing it's a 10 years it's it's a bit hectic like that uh, I guess I will uh, do the data I mean, I'll get the database done in a few days then we can start from there because in GeoRock or ArthChem I'm not getting any uh, data which is dedicated for Mosevia spectral analysis of Garnet Hello. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, I, I had, had a doubt. I had a doubt. The 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 pyroxene group they did uh, uh, something similar to what we are trying to do with Garnet. So, uh, did they have any? Uh, did they have any access to database where this uh, spectral analysis data were available? Like I know there's a Mosabier uh, data effect center where we can download the data, but I can't access it. Like whenever I try to register, I can't access it. So is there anything like that? Then the job could okay. be like... Uh, I, I think, could you post the question at the CGU or data in the Slack? And I'm going to add the leaders in the oh. uh, oh. Pyroxene okay. groups. Yeah, oh. so that we could get more details. They know more details okay. of it. Okay, so we'll continue with that. And I think uh, now that since Ujash also joined the group, so uh, I think the team leaders uh, to him could assign more task. Um, uh, and also, Umi's opinion at 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 that direction uh, is moving um, in the direction that Umi suggested. So, so we we'll, we'll could complete more details uh, in the Slack chat. And also, from oh, we're going to meet again next Monday at 9 p.m. Beijing time. So we're trying to meet in the evening because it will be easier for Natasha because it's about five hours um, later. Uh, uh, of Moscow time compared with Beijing time. So meeting in the morning at 11 a.m. Beijing time probably is too early for Natasha. So let, let's always keep meeting at 9 p.m. Beijing time, uh, which is, I think, a reasonable time in India. And so that's a reasonable time in uh, Moscow too. Okay, so do we have any more comments before we run out of our time? Because we do have three minutes before this session ends. Okay, 
uh, that's so much for tonight. And uh, thanks for participating. And uh, have a good weekend. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. By yeah. the way, I'm in Guangzhou now, which is uh, in the southern part of China. They yes. did Canton area. They speak a local dialect called the Cantonese. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lei and Ben, um, well, three of us are here uh, visiting and also performing some research here. So yes, I had a nice little chat with Ben about that. He has That's promised good. to send Guangzhou. me. A few, he has promised to send me a few photos. Yeah, yeah, we'll send you a lot of photos because tomorrow we are going to have a party you know, for our program because we do have maybe 10 members of our program are going to come to the hotel and then we're going to play some bowling tomorrow. Okay. Okay, have a good evening, everybody. Yeah, yeah. bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.